I'm not attacking a community of people and believers that are hungry and searching for him. What I'm, what I'm saying is, don't put a list. Don't give your demands to Jesus. Here's, who you, here's my God list. Go be this for me. Right? That's what the religious were doing. They, they said, we've got you figured out. Here's my God box. Right? And then they gave it to you as well. Man, I just want to get rid of that. That's what Jesus is confronting. He's always inviting. He says, look, ask for more. Just ask for more. Just ask for more. Right? And don't let the fear of man dictate what you do. Right? You're going to do some things that are going to make, may make you look like a fool. Right? When you're, when you're in Walmart and you see the person who's, who's got a cane or a severe limp or maybe they're in a wheelchair, you're exposing yourself when you go up to them and say, can I pray for you? Because I've seen God heal. And I have testimonies of him healing that disease or that physical need right there. Can I pray for you? You've just done a couple things. One, you've, 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 you, you look goofy maybe. You've, you, you, maybe you look a little vulnerable, right? And so my, my defenses go up, fear, right? And what am I going to do here? Am I going to soften Jesus down? Am I going to soft, you know, just what am I going to do? The other thing I've done is I've, I've made a declaration. I've just exposed God too. God, I just told them you're going to heal them, right? Do I, so do I, what happens if I pray for them and they don't get up out of the wheelchair? Do I change my theology, right? Do I re-describe him? Do I re-characterize God to excuse him from not healing them? We do that, right? Why? Fear of man. Fear. Church, I want to, when we have conflict, when we have um, needs, right, in your life, that which, it exposes that which you trust in. When you have needs, it will expose what you put your trust into. Right? I can guarantee you this. He's always peaceful. He's always love. He's always joy. Right? There's a settledness that comes resting in his response. Right? When, the way heaven responds and so I just want to encourage you that we would be a people that um, fear doesn't um, frighten us, right? right? We displace it by love. We displace it by him. I, want to, I do not want to be a man who's dictated by fear, right? That's what, that's what he's saying with this, this issue of leaven of the Pharisees and, and leaven of Herod. He says, because that... what. When I lean into those systems, right, it amplifies that response in me, right? I'm actually doing, well, I won't say that. I was going to say doing his business, the other guy's business. But it's like, I want to lean into kingdom. And here's the, here's the promise. And I know I kind of blabbed a little bit. I didn't stick to notes. But I just want to read um, a proverb to you, right? In 29.25 of Proverbs, it says, the fear of man brings a snare but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe trust in the Lord shall be safe you know that that, that phrase shall be safe it literally means to be high to be inaccessibly high it gets us back down to that same conflict we read about in Romans 1. Ephesians tells you you've been invited to sit with him in heavenly places. It's your right. It's your privilege. It's not something that's um, when he comes back and I go to heaven, I get that. It's a now thing right now. Ephesians promises I sit with him in heavenly places. Not only that, it tells me in from that place all fear all principalities, all those tormenting things of the world are so far beneath me that from <laughs> inaccessibly high, those things aren't a conflict in my life. I just, I, I want to be about learning to live that way. Is that, is that what you want? Why don't you stand with me this morning? <clears throat>